Hey y'all, it's Kelly with Dixie Darlings Tumblers here. And today I'm gonna walk through how I apply alcohol inks to a cup. So we're gonna take some vinyl cut in a silhouette of the mountains and the water and some fun little wilderness animals and I'm gonna apply that to the cup. Then I'm gonna go back in with my alcohol inks and add color. So it's something that I've kind of been resistant to do a tutorial on just because there's some amazing tutorials out there on alcohol inks. And I tend to not always have good consistency with them. So sometimes I love the way they look to start with and then sometimes I have to wipe it off and start over. So, but you guys have been asking for this tutorial so I'm trying to give you what you want. So I hope you enjoy it. Please, as always, ask any questions that you have and give me feedback, tag me in your creations and I appreciate y'all watching. So we are gonna start with a sanded and spray painted cup. I've just sanded the cup and then spray painted with Rust-Oleum 2X white. And then I've printed out my basic decal. So I know there's gonna be lots of ways to do this. This is just how I do it. I kind of piece my designs together and I've always done that since I started doing cups like this, the wood grain where I do the hunting seam. I just get a better feel for how I want it to lay out on the cup if I take my main decal and I measure it to basically fit the circumference of the cup here but then I know I want to go back at in and add some other details so I start with my basic design being the circumference and that's what I'm laying it down now to kind of see how much excess room I have so I printed off an extra mountain that I'm gonna add into the background to kind of make it blend better and I know I want the mountain about the same size as the other ones. So when I printed it out in design space, I did make sure that the mountain, the extra spare mountain, was the same size as the one that's in the main graphic. So you can see here, I'm just trying to kind of decide where I want vertically the design on the cup to go and then making sure that my mountain's going to fit and it's going to kind of blend the two designs together. Then I'm just gonna line up the main design on the cup. So you'll see me go back and forth. I'm just trying to make sure that the mountains are basically you know, in line around the cup before I go put the mountain on. And then I'm just going to lay my cup down here and take my extra mountain and put it on first because I want it in the background of my main design. And then once I've got the smaller mountain on, I'm just gonna apply my transfer tape to the entire graphic for the big design. Sometimes I piece this together. I may cut it up in smaller pieces if it seems to fit around the cut better. But this one, I'm pretty sure I can just do it all in one piece. So I'm just gonna cover the whole thing in transfer tape and then apply this to the cut. Then once I'm pretty sure it's lined up straight, I'm just gonna cut a little piece off of the backing of my transfer tape so I can apply that first little bit of the design. And then I'm basically just gonna flip the cup over and instead of pulling the whole sheet of trans the backing off my transfer tape, I'm just gonna use the tool to kind of push it off as I'm going around the cup. Anytime I have a large sheet of vinyl like this, I tend to do better if I leave the backing on it as long as I can. Otherwise, I'm bound to make a mess with it and it's gonna stick to something that it doesn't need to. So I always try to leave the backing on my vinyl as long as I can. And then once I make sure it's pressed pretty firmly on the cup, I'm just gonna carefully remove my transfer tape. And I just do this very carefully, especially if these mountains are pretty intricate and I've got the little ducks and I want the ducks to stay on the cup. So I try to be careful to make sure that everything sticks really good to the cup as I'm pulling the transfer tape off. So because I'm gonna paint the bottom of the cup black, I've printed off some extra little strips and little strips of grass. So in the original design, it had an open area where the water would you know, flow in and out, but that didn't really work with my design since I'm painting the bottom of them black. So I'm just gonna go in and close those little gaps in and add some little grass in. So it still looks natural, but it allows me a line to paint below. So 
So you'll notice that I've gone from a 40 ounce to a 30 ounce. The 40 ounce is just too much area. And so I decided to do a 30 ounce skinny instead with the design. It seemed to close in better. It just fit better in my mind. So um, I'm ready to go. So I've got a magic eraser that I've cut up into little pieces. That's all it is. It's just a magic eraser. I've cut it up into, you know, little one inch by half inch sections. They don't require anything big. And then I'm going to decide what colors I want to use on my water. So even though I know basically what colors these are, I still like to have a sample of it right in front of me so I can kind of see how they fit before I apply it to the cup. So that's kind of what I'm doing now. I'm just going through, making sure I have the colors. I'm sitting them aside. I'm using Happy Colada here, and I will link these all in the description box below. Tropical Mermaid. And then the third one I'm gonna use is Adios MF. So those are the three I'm gonna start with. And you'll see, I just kind of work with these colors as I go around. Um, and sometimes I'll add more colors that I didn't really anticipate. So I'm just gonna dot a little bit on the cup, take the end of the magic eraser and just kind of dot it. So you're gonna see me, I'm just gonna kind of let this play because I wanted you guys to actually see me doing this. Cause a lot of times I do things really fast or you know, I don't want to cut you guys short on this. I want you to really see what I'm doing if you really have questions about it. So I'm just trying to cover the area because I am going to go back in and blend these better. Um, so the first color, this is the main color I'm going to want the water. I start with it and I do pretty good coverage of this color to start with. Then I'm going into my second color. I'm not gonna put as much of this color on. Just kind of fill in the empty open spots here to have some coverage with this color, but not as heavy as the first color. Then I'm going to add this third color and it's very similar to the second one but I know just from experience with this color that it provides a little bit of a darker coverage when I go to blend them all in together. So I'm going to add that one and then I also decide that I want a little bit darker color in there mixed into the darker blue so I'm going to go back in and add that one also. Then once I've made sure that I have pretty good coverage with all my colors, I'm gonna go in and take a clean piece of the Magic Eraser and wet it with alcohol, just use 91% rubbing alcohol, and then I'm just gonna start dabbing it around. So I'm holding the cup directly straight out in front of me so the, color, so the alcohol will allow the colors to run together a little bit. So I'm just gonna work my way around the cup. I'm trying to keep it pretty level here so the colors will just kind of rotate you don't think you get very much movement but i've learned that i do get a lot of movement if i just keep spinning it like as if it were on the turner but i'm just doing it in my hand and then i'm just going to keep working the alcohol i'm going to add some more alcohol to my magic eraser piece and then i'm just going to keep working it around any places that look like they're clumping up or they're too dark in areas i'm just going to keep adding more alcohol rubbing alcohol to that And really you just, it's whatever you like as to how much alcohol you wanna add to it. So I wanted this to be a little bit lighter. So I do go over this a few times and continue to add alcohol because I wanted the animals to stand out. So I thought it was a little bit too dark after my first pass of going around the cup with alcohol. So I'm gonna make a second pass just to make it a little bit lighter. And then I just keep kind of rotating my cup around, spinning it around. And then I am gonna go in with a dry piece, just a clean dry piece in any areas that have kind of a streak through them where the alcohol is kind of run and clumped up in an area. I'm just gonna wipe that off with a clean piece. And then I'm gonna move into the mountains. I do start with a green. Here, it was a little bit too bright, so I went in and added a purple to it. 
and then I still didn't like that. You'll see I go back in later and, and add another color to, I just couldn't get my mountain color right for some, for some reason this time. And this color is Wild Irish Rose. I will link all the colors that I use in the description box below and I'll probably try to break them down to like these are the colors I use in the water, these are the we use in the mountain, these are the ones I use in the sky. So the majority of the colors that I'm using are from Woody's Goodies. I love their alcohol inks. Whether I'm putting them on a cup like this or I'm dropping them into epoxy, they are just beautiful. So I will link all those in the description box below for you guys. So after I've got my mountains done, I am going to do the same thing. I'm going to take a clean piece and fill it with alcohol and then just dab it around just to get the colors to kind of blend a little bit. Like I only added two colors, but I still feel like it just blends better than where I've just put them on there with a magic eraser if I add a little alcohol to them. So now I'm going to start on the skyline. I'm going to start with this bright pink and do pretty heavy coverage and a line here because I am going to come back in with a lighter color closer to the mountains that I know once I add, start adding alcohol to this they're all going to blend together so I don't worry about it too much you can see I'm going back in with a color that's pretty similar here but it's just a little bit lighter <laughs> And now I'm going to go in with a more pink purple tone because I know I'm going to go into purple next. So I'm just going to go above the original pink line and apply this pink purple violet color. I'm going to kind of work it in where I'm starting to blend the colors. I'm not really going to do that with this process, but I do try to avoid just doing a straight line. So I kind of blend it down towards the mountains and the skyline. So now I'm going in with my lightest purple here. And same thing, I do have a tendency to go in a straight line, so I try to make myself kind of go up and down a little bit, just so the blending already starts before I go in and add alcohol. So I'm gonna add the purple, then I'm gonna go in with a light blue, then I go with a little bit darker blue, and then I usually add a little bit of black. So I don't go very heavy on the black, um, just because I just want a little bit of a darker color, but I don't, but black can be, can overtake sometimes. So I try not to add too much of that one on this design. And then while I have my black out, I'm just gonna go in and start this little line right here. I'm not gonna go very far on it. I'm just gonna kinda get this initial little line out of the way. You can actually use spray paint. I do spray paint sometimes on the bottom of this. But this design, I just wanted it to be more of natural, so I just, I'm just i gonna do the bottom with black alcohol ink. So here you can see I'm still not happy with my mountain color, so I'm gonna go back in and add a third color, this slate color here. Um, just to try to get them not so bright. They just weren't exactly the color I was looking for for the mountains. Now I'm going to take a piece of the magic eraser that is actually the width of the magic eraser. So instead of the little pieces, I'm going to take a bigger piece, still a thin little piece, and I'm just going to soak it down in my alcohol here just because I know I have a pretty big area to cover. I don't want the little pieces. So I'm just gonna start dabbing that around. And I'm gonna go around the cup several times in this same spot because once you go into the darker colors and then try to come back down, 
everybody knows what's going to happen. The purple is going to get into the pink and I'm not going to be happy. <laughs> so I try to stay l with my lightest color until I get it like I want it before I move into the darker colors. So I'm just dabbing it. And you notice I never swipe or wipe it. I'm strictly just dabbing that on there. Um, I don't want to smear it. I just want it soaking up the alcohol. And I'm going to do the same thing as I did before with the water. I'm just keeping it straight out from me and just rotating it around as I go. So these colors will start running together and blending to look more like a watercolor than they look like I've just, you know, batted them on there. And you notice you just have to keep going around it until you get it like you want it. And then I'm just going to keep spinning it because you can see there's kind of areas right here where you can still see where I've placed the magic racer with the out with the alcohol on it. But if you just keep turning it, they just keep running together. So I'm always surprised at how much movement I get after I stop with the magic racer and the alcohol, but they do seem to keep blending together. So as long as I'm keeping rotating the cup until they're just strictly dried out. So about when I get them like I want them, I will go back in with a clean piece here, just like I did before, and just blot any areas that I feel like need to be uh, blended a little bit better. You're not gonna be able to blend them really well, but you will be able to pull some of that, a little bit of that ink off where it just, they don't look so bright in certain spots. There's like a line or a crease. So now I'm just gonna go back in with the black and cover my bottom. After I've let that dry for about an hour, I have mixed up 20 milliliters of epoxy and I'm gonna add peachy olive glitters bright to this, but I'm just gonna add a little bit. I'm just gonna, I mean, barely tap some in there. So I don't want any kind of heavy coverage on this. I just want a little bit of sparkle over the alcohol inks. So I'm gonna apply this. I'm gonna use my torch to pop any bubbles and then I'm gonna let this coat dry for about six to eight hours and I'm gonna be ready to apply my decal. And now I'm ready to apply my decal. Now I did create this decal in an app called Word Swag. I couldn't really find on Etsy or anywhere exactly what I was looking for. And this is a cool little app that not only do you select your font, then if you type all your text in there, it'll create these kind of fun little ways that you can have all kinds of options that you can do with them. So I basically stuck the text in there, chose my font, and then it formatted it like this. So then I saved it. And I will have this linked in my... Well, actually, I'll have a link to my Facebook group, and I'll have it in the file section of that group. And this cup was pretty basic as far as vinyl work goes, so I just apply my decal. I did sand a light rim around the top to be exposed for my final layer. I did that with a 220 grit sanding block just because there wasn't anything sharp, and I didn't want to get too much of the paint off of it. So then I've mixed up 20 milliliters of epoxy, and I'm applying that, and that's pretty much it for this cup. So... Let me know what you guys think. I hope that you enjoyed the tutorial. Make sure you go like, share, subscribe, all that fun, crazy stuff. And until next time, I will see y'all then. And I appreciate y'all watching.